Hi, folks. Welcome to Crisco's Corner. Hi, folks. Welcome back. This is an interview with a part of an interview with Elon Musk and a BBC reporter. Now, this is not as confrontational as the Jordan Peterson BBC reporter that went viral for years and has had hundreds of millions of views. It just shows you how idiotic and ridiculous, and I'm going to say all right, stupid, some of these supposedly educated reporters are. Let's uh, let's get a start here, and we'll, I'm going to comment along the way. Free speech is meaningless unless you allow people uh, you don't like to say things you don't like. Otherwise, it's irrelevant. Um, and if at the point at which you lose uh, free speech, uh, it doesn't come back. Whoop, there it goes. Yep. My brain stopped. I, th I think the issue some people have is that a lot of people were brought back. I mean, some people were brought back who uh, were previously banned for spreading things like uh, QAnon conspiracies. You have people like Andrew Tate who were brought back. Who and there we have it. People we don't like were brought back. Now, they're saying that's misinformation and conspiracy theories. I'll bet you right now on Twitter and on this website as well that there are hundreds if not thousands of videos that have people that believe the earth is flat. Now, I recently got a second strike for misinformation that was a parody on Trump being arrested, and I have to go for the next three weeks with two strikes hanging over this channel because it was a joke. They call the misinformation. Who gets to decide? was misinformation. Who gets to decide what is parody, what is a joke, was an outright lie. Usually the people you would never, ever, ever want to be those censors. Let's listen on. You were previously uh, banned for things like hate speech. Do you think you prioritize freedom of, of speech over misinformation and hate speech? First of all, there's no such thing as hate speech. There's speech you find repugnant, the ridiculous, evil, wrong, wonderful, glorious, and everything else in the middle. There's no such thing. It's like a hate crime. If somebody assaults me as I'm walking down the street and they're caught, they're charged with assault. If I'm black and I get the same exact person with the exam exact assault, it's a hate crime. For some reason, me getting assaulted has less value. That, folks, is racism. Let's listen on. Well, you know, who's to say that something is misinformation? Um, who's the arbiter of that? Is it the BBC? And he's sitting there, uh, duh. Was that a question? Wait a minute. I'm the interviewer. I asked the questions. Yeah, you literally, literally asking me. Yes. Well, no. You, you, are the, the you are the arbiter on Twitter because you own Twitter. Yes, I'm saying. Who, who is to say that one person's misinformation is another person's information? Um, at the point at which you, you say that there is, uh, this is misinformation. Like, who is but going you, but you to decide that? You accept that misinformation can be dangerous, that it can cause yes. real world harms, that it can potentially cause. Um, yeah. So the point I'm trying to make is that the BBC itself has, at times, published things that are false. Do you agree that that has occurred? I, 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 I'm quite sure uh, the BBC have uh, uh, said things before that turn out to not be true. Uh, right. In, in its whatever it is, 100-year history, I'm quite sure. Yes. Now, well, I'm sure it's 100-year history back, back 100 years ago in the 1920s and 30s when they had radio. That's BS. I'm even going to use the word. That is complete other bull. How about the last hundred days, moron? How about the, the BBC has to have different rules, of course, in the U.S. because we have a constitution and a bill of rights they don't. Here's the difference. The BBC can say whatever they want to in the United States, true or untrue. Then there's liable laws to help take care of that. On things like Twitter, Facebook, this website are protected under Section 230 of the federal law that bars them from being sued. There's a huge difference. So 
Oh, you're asking is oranges and apples. But rather than get in the weeds, let's let's listen on. Even if you aspire to be accurate, there are times when it will, you you will not be. We've spoken to people very recently who were involved in moderation, and they just say they just there's not enough people to police this stuff, particularly around um, particularly around hate speech um, in the company. Is that well, what hate that speech are you talking about? I mean, you use Twitter, right? Do you see a rise in hate speech? Now that's a legit question. That's a legit question. Now there's a body language expert. I like her. She's on here. Uh, looking at the way the BBC reporter handles himself. He's asking them, have you seen it? Uh, 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 well, uh, I mean, I, I, just a personal anecdote. Like, what do you do? I don't. P personally, my uh, for you, I would see I get I get more of that kind of content. Yeah, personally. But I, I'm not going to talk to talk to the rest of for, for the rest of Twitter. So you see more hate speech personally. I would say I would see more hateful content in that. In that Content point. you don't like or or hateful. What do you mean to describe a hateful thing? Whoops! There it goes. Yep, my brain stopped. Yeah, I mean you know just content that will solicit a, a reaction, something that may include something that is slightly racist or slightly sexist. Those kinds of. See how he avoids the question because he can't answer it because it doesn't exist. Now here's the thing. If this guy was a decent reporter, I can see why they pay their BBC reporters crap. Because he should have came prepared. But the thing is, though, he didn't want to be prepared on this question. But if he could have shown something as a good reporter and said, listen, here's two or three examples of erroneous stuff, just horrible stuff that wasn't taken down, he might make his case. But he doesn't have to. Because he can make his case and lie to people without facts. Let's listen on. It's fascinating. These kinds of things. So you think if I'm, something is slightly sexist, it should be banned? I, no. Is that I'm what not, you're saying? I'm not saying anything. I'm well, saying. I'm just curious. What you, I'm, I, I'm not saying anything. Yes, you are saying something. Yes, you are. Oh, well, it's not me. It's the other uh, media outlets. And the other media outlets say, oh, well, it's not me. It's the other media outlets. I'm not saying anything. These people suck so bad. I'm trying to understand what you mean by hateful con content. And I'm asking for specific examples. Um, and, if, and you just said that if something is slightly sexist, that's hateful content. Does that mean that it should be bad? Well, you've asked me, you've asked me whether my feed, whether it's got less or more. It, I'd say it's got slightly more. That's but what I'm asking for examples. Can, right. you, can you name one example? I, I honestly don't need, I, I, honestly, I you don't. You can't name I, a single example. I'll tell you why, because I don't actually use that for you. Whoops, there it goes. Yep, my brain stopped. Now look at the shock look on Elon Musk's face. Even he's shocked that this moron can't come up with one example. You'd think he would bring one. There's always one person that's posts something ridiculous and stupid and just horrible. That, that, you know, we'll mention something about the Holocaust and what happened, you know, something like that and make a joke out of it or say something in really bad taste concerning someone losing their life or their race or their religion. No, can't, he didn't bring one, not one. Interesting. And look at the shock. Look at the look on Elon Musk's face. You came here this unprepared, you idiot. I hope this guy never applies for a job for Elon Musk because they'd laugh him out of the office. Let's listen on. You feed anymore because I, I just don't particularly like it. But you said actually, you, a, lot of people, a lot of people are quite similar. I, 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 only, well, well, I only look well, at my, on a my second. Following. You said you've seen more hateful content, but you can't name a single example, not even one. I'm not sure I've used that feed for the last three or four weeks. And I, well, I, then I how did you see the hateful content? content? Because I've been, I've, been using, I've been using Twitter since you've taken it over for the last six months. Okay. Well, you just said he hasn't been using it. Well, I just use it since you've been taking over. And they lie like this with a straight face. And here's the weird part. I don't think he knows he's lying. It's basically doublespeak. Look up doublespeak uh, in the dictionary, in the online dictionary. It's the word used from 1984. Okay, so then you must have at some point seen the you, for you hateful content. I'm asking for one example. Right. And you I, can't I, give a single I, one. And, and, and I'm saying... I, I, then I, I say, sir, that you don't know what you're talking about. Really? But hey, you reap what you sow, bitches. Yes, because you can't give me a single example of hateful con content, not even one tweet. And yet you claimed that the hateful content was high. Well, 
That's a false. No, what I claimed... You just lied. What, no, no, what I claimed was... Oh, there it goes. Yep. My brain stopped. Uh, you just lied. Good for you, Elon. Say it right out. But he's, he's how they cover themselves. Listen to this. Uh, there are many uh, organizations that say that that kind of information uh, is on the rise. Now, whether, whether it has a my feed one or example. not. Now, the way it works is this. With all the media websites, all the mainstream media, social media, everything. We'll say Vox puts out a report that Twitter hate speech has gone up 625%. Then the media outlet will report, well, Vox reports that hate speech is up 625%. And then they'll all jump on that same talking point, if you know, because they all talk the same. So the BBC guy will sit here and say, well, it's the other outlets. It's the other media outlets are saying hate speech has increased 625%, not us. And if you ask any other the media outlets, they'll say, well, not us, it's the other media outlets, and this is how this works. One starts to lie, all the rest pile on and say, not me, I'm just reporting what they're saying. And they point fingers at each other and everybody laughs. Good for you, Elon, it is a lie. I mean, I, right, and if you look at someone want. like the, the uh, Strategic Dialogue uh, Institute in the, U, in the UK, they will say that. So, you, they, look, Strategic Dialogue Institute, if that doesn't sound like 1984, I don't know what does. People will say all sorts of nonsense. I'm literally asking for a right. single example, and you can't name one. Right, and as, as I've already said, I don't use that feed. But let's, well, then how let, would you know? Let, that I don't you, think this is getting anywhere. You literally said... I don't think this is getting anywhere. Because he's not letting you get away with your bull. It's that simple. And you don't like it. Now, I'm sure these interviews are very much timed, because he's a very busy guy, Elon Musk. So it's amazing to me. He'll want to change the subject. Well, this is really getting nowhere. No, what's getting nowhere is your narrative. You experienced more hateful content and then couldn't name a single example. Right, and as I said, I that's absurd. I haven't, I haven't actually looked at that feed. Then how would you know if there's hateful content? Because I'm saying that's what I saw a few weeks ago. I can't give you an exact example. Let's move on. We, have, we only have a certain amount of time. Um, well, COVID misinformation. Now... Before they get into this, which is bugaboo on this website, this topic, this, if I was Elon Musk, and I'm really surprised he didn't. Okay, you're a liar, you're a finagler, you're a scumbag. You're taking a, a billions of dollars worth of my net worth in Twitter and trying to damage me financially with your BS. The interview is over, get up. And if you don't leave, I'm assuming they're at an Elon Musk facility. It makes it easier for them to do the interview. If you're not off my facility in five minutes, I'll have security drag you out. Get the out. That's what I would have done at this point. Let's listen on to the rest. Now, I'm not allowed to say anything because there's two strikes hanging over my channel, so I can't say the COVID misinformation or non-misinformation. This is just... I'm not, I can't comment on any of this because there's a there's a gun to my head, so to speak. So I'm just going to let it play through. Now, I can't really show the rest. I'm going to fast forward here because it'll because like I said, I have a a two strikes hanging over my channel. Let's listen to the end here. And what about the fact that the BBC was? So isn't that interesting? Elon Musk asked him. You say there's a, you saw personally hate speech increase in your personal feed. He says, yes. Can you name one? Uh, no. And then he finally backtracks and retreats to the position. Well, it wasn't just me. Uh, it's the other media outlets. And he needs some organization in the UK, which is basically 1984 just pure it's just amazing to me now do these people know they're lying I, I debate that because if they know they're lying they're still humans if they're saying this and it's a lie and they don't believe it's a lie they double speak they twist words 
they believe two different positions at the same time, that does really a lot of damage to your psyche, and that makes them dangerous. So good for you, Elon. Uh, you know, I wish there were more of these interviews, and maybe he will because he's going to see. And he's had interviews before. He's been interviewed thousands and thousands of times, and so is Jordan Peterson. But it's funny how they show a little bit more respect and don't interrupt Elon Musk as much as interrupt Dr. Peterson, but that's another video for another day. So here we go. More of the exposure of the morons in the progressive far-left media. Granted, this is BBC, but BBC has a huge influence in England as well as Australia and the United States, and they act exactly the same as the American media outlets. Amazing, amazing, amazing. We need more of this exposure. How many hearts and minds will be changed by when they see how ridiculous these morons are? Only God knows. And I pray that it's enough to turn the tide. Tell me what you think. Leave in the comment section. And as always, until next time, goodbye and good luck.